You're listening to an interview taken from the Tonic Talk Show and Podcast, heard exclusively on Zoomer Radio. To download or listen to the original episode or other episodes of The Tonic, please visit thetonic.ca. Joel Thuna is a master herbalist and general manager of Purely Natural. He strives to improve the quality of natural products in the market and passes along his knowledge of herbal remedies through lectures and articles. He also happens to be a columnist for Tonic Magazine, and his latest article in the January-February issue is all about one of the greatest healing tools known to man, <laughs> chicken soup. How are you, Joel? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm happy and I can't help but giggle with that one. Yeah. I'm excited about this this topic. You know, when I saw your article and you pitched the idea of talking about the health benefits of chicken soup in a scientific way, I'm all over it because I think it's fantastic. So let's go to the beginning here. Uh, are the benefits of chicken soup real or mythical? Well, that's a double-edged sword or two sides of the same coin to answer that one. First off, we have to talk a little bit about the history to get into that. Okay. It, it, it makes it a little more yeah, interesting yeah. in my opinion. I know in my family, growing up, anytime there was a sniffle, someone sneezed or there was a cough, chicken soup was there. Yep. We always had some in the fridge, always had some in the freezer. And every time I went over to my grandmother's house, it was always on the stove. She seemed to be making it perpetually. Well, <laughs> it's a cultural thing amongst our people. Chicken soup <laughs> is, is, it's the jam. And looking it up, actually, it's touted as one of the best ways in thousands of texts to both prevent and treat all kinds of winter ailments. Not only has it been reputed to work well against a whole raft of them, it's funny in that every single reference I found to it also talked about how delicious it was. Of course. <laughs> Who doesn't like a bowl? Now, there's a dichotomy. Are you a chicken noodle or a chicken rice man? I'm actually a purist. I don't put anything in it. I just have the soup and veggies. Oh. Uh, I'm a purist. Are, Occasionally, I'm a Okay. <laughs> I'm the noodle man. I love chicken noodle. I don't understand the chicken rice people. I understand they exist. <laughs> I don't know why, but there you go. All right, so you're, you're getting a bit into the history yeah. of chicken soups. Let's go back. Back in time. Let's talk about chicken soup in, in the dark ages. Well, definitely. We can actually trace it back to about 10,000 years ago wow. in Southeast Asia when uh, right around the time that we started domesticating avian species, be it turkey, duck, chicken, etc. Right around that time, the ancient Greeks started to put chicken in water and boil it, yep. <laughs> creating broth. Now, not nearly that long, but pretty darn close, we find that they start talking about it as a healing agent, not just as a food. About the 12th century, there was a book called On the Cause of Symptoms by an Egyptian Jewish physician philosopher, and I'm going to try and pronounce it right, Mamayanides. Yes. I apologize if I got it wrong. Uh, he talked at length about chicken broth as a treatment for malnutrition, asthma, and even leprosy. Yes. At the same time that we find other scholars talking about chicken soup to cure everything from bedwetting to leprosy. See, leprosy, I'm not sure. <laughs> if I got leprosy, I mean, I would certainly still have chicken soup. <laughs> I don't know that I would rely on it to help me with the leprosy. I hope I never get leprosy. I think I, that's a wise course. Yeah, but if I get leprosy, I will continue to have chicken soup. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's carry it forward. Um, what was chicken soup, what, what, what can it be used for? Well, tons of people use it for common cold. They use it for flu. They use it for sniffles, right. aches and pains. I found tons of information on that. But in order to understand whether it actually works, we have to go through first and, and understand what a common cold is, what the flu is, sure. and what all the other things are. Yeah, yeah. So let's go through common colds first. Yep. Common colds are viral infections. Everyone gets colds, period. There is no one that doesn't. Yep. Children, in my realm called germ factories, yep. get more colds than adults. There are over a hundred different viruses known to cause the common cold with new ones popping up every year. Colds usually last one to two weeks. You can catch a cold at any time of year, but they're more common in late winter and early spring when we're cloistered indoors, really close to one another. So every time one person sneezes, everyone enjoys the germs. Yep. And they usually come on slowly over the course of a couple days. The important thing is they're not nasty. They're just annoying. Yes. They really are. Now, flus, they're a different story. 
Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is an extremely contagious respiratory illness caused by one of two viruses, the influenza A or influenza B virus. It appears frequently in winter and early spring. It comes on rapidly, attacks the body by spreading through the upper and or lower respiratory tract. Now, the cold and flu are both contagious viral infections. We already covered that. Yep. Symptoms can be similar and they occur roughly at the same time, but the flu is much worse. A cold essentially makes you feel tired and drags you down a bit. And just you feel a little yucky. You can get into your sinuses and yeah. gives you headaches. It's unpleasant. Yep. But the flu can make you bedridden. It can knock you on your butt. Both cold and flu cause coughing, headaches, and congestion, but the flu normally causes body aches, high fever, fatigue, and weakness. It's dangerous, and I do mean truly dangerous, in the very young and the elderly and people with compromised immune systems, and people actually die every year from the flu. Hmm. It's not. Everyone, obviously, because then we'd have a population issue, Right. but there are yeah. people who die of the flu. People don't die of the common cold. The other big thing to know whenever anyone's talking about cold and flu, no matter what anyone tells you, anyone, there is no cure. Yes. Cure. The word cure does not exist in cold and flu. You can deal with the symptoms. Uh, you can set yourself up so that you don't get as many cold and flu. Correct. Uh, but once you have it, it's got to work its way through your system. Correct. And a big thing with this one is antibiotics are 100% useless. Right, because they, they deal with bacteria. They, there's no such thing as an antibiotic that deals with viruses. Correct. And even worse, if you use antibiotics when you have a cold or the flu, you're actually contributing to the development of superbugs. Right. So it actually is a huge negative, not even remotely a positive. Can I interject for a second? I just want sure. to talk about uh, my experience with cold and flu since I changed sort of the way I conducted myself. Mm -hmm. When I was lethargic and not exercising, and by that I mean when I was obese and mm -hmm. carrying extra weight and not sleeping well, I would get cold and flu probably two or three times a season because I was just susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. When I started losing my weight, when I started exercising, when I made sleep a priority, I maybe, maybe get hit with one cold or flu per season. So I've actually cut it down by two thirds just by living a healthier lifestyle. Oh, definitely. There's no question. Your body is less susceptible. Right. To infection of any kind. Correct. Yep. No question. If that isn't a reason to get off your butt <laughs> so that you avoid getting the flu, I don't, I don't know what is. The other big advantage is you now probably enjoy winter. Yes. As opposed to dread it. I don't dread it. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you enjoy, Joel. I will say I don't, I don't dread it. So, so how does chicken soup help? What, what's it doing? Well, here's the fun part. A doctor, Stephen Renard mm -hmm. at the University of Nebraska Medical Center published a study on this. He actually researched what chicken soup does. He was of course prompted by his grandmother, <laughs> but he did do it. And the study is so important that it's been cited in over 1,200 publications since he published it. Wow. Which is, that's big. Yeah. He found that chicken soup is a powerhouse of beneficial compounds because of its ingredients. And if you think about that, that actually makes sense. Yep. You're taking carrots, onions, celery, the spices, garlic, turmeric, ginger, in my case, I use a ton of oregano. I love oregano. I put basil in it. Yep. I put a ton of parsley in it. Mm -hmm. And you're getting concentration of a lot of the health benefits of all those things, which you already know are very healthy. It doesn't get boiled off? Like the health the some nutrients? Of, some of the volatile compounds and some of the spices will, but the whole thing is there's so many things overlapping into it that, yeah, you're losing some specific compounds in some of the spices, right. but you're still getting so many other healthy things. It makes up for it. I understood, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the fat content in the broth, I mean, you don't want to have the pure fat, but <laughs> the fat content actually kind of helps in fighting some of the symptomology of colds and flus. Like it helps. It's not in and of itself that it helps. It's the fact that some of the nutrients get trapped in it. Okay. And so they're, they're saved or preserved, I guess would be a better word, and that's how it works. Okay. And they found that the ingredients in combination, none separately as part of a broth, can help alleviate the common cold and flu symptoms mm -hmm. and help the body fight off the infection itself. 
Notice I did not use the word cure. Right. <laughs> it yeah. will not. His study began with a focus on possible anti-inflammatory properties present in the soup. He started there. And he found that white blood cell movement slowed down. And it by slowing it down, it actually reduced inflammation. And the reduction in inflammation is a direct causational. Right. It's byproduct of, of, of the soup. Correct. And that helps alleviate the cold and flu symptoms. Huh. It's that A to B to C. So you have white blood cells slowed down by chicken soup, and that reduces inflammation, and that reduction in inflammation helps the body alleviate cold and flu symptoms. Fantastic. All right. So where do you want to go from here? What do you want to talk about next about the chicken soup? Well, the, the second part of his thing is once he did that, he said, okay, we know it reduces inflammation and that does this. What else can it do? And so what they did is they looked at what was in the chicken soup nutritionally when it was finished. Okay. So not the individual components together. And they yep. found that it is just packed with easily digestible nutrients, including protein, calcium, gelatin, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And through all of these, and we're not talking one or two compounds of each, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of compounds in here, mm -hmm. interacting with each other, and all of them healthy. And a big thing on top of it is, is that it's in a water base. Mm -hmm. It's not a cream base. It's not a tomato base. It's water base. So the combination of those with the water goes into you. It helps keep you hydrated, yes. which is very important when you're ill of any kind to be hydrated. So it's the combination of the hydration and all of these nutrients and at the same time anti-inflammatory that works as a, as a holistic way to just help your body recover. I want to add two things. Obviously, it's going to put some sodium into your body that you may have lost. And the other thing is this. I think spiritually and emotionally chicken soup is good, particularly if it's homemade, because it's a comfort food. Oh, definitely. And that can't be understated. If you're feeling, if you're queasy from having the flu, there's only so many kinds of foods you're going to be able to digest. And chicken soup for me has always been one. I can always have chicken soup. No matter how yucky I'm feeling, I can down some chicken soup. But it's a nice thought that somebody's went to the trouble, maybe not of making it, but at least buying it for you, <laughs> of having that care. Like it takes me back to when I was a kid because my mom and my grandmother used to make it for me. And that, you know, psychologically, that kind of means something, you know, like if you're lying in bed or if you're, you manage to trundle down to the kitchen to have it, I think it's soul warming and not just body warming. Well, it's, it's emotional support. Yeah. It's emotional support through food. Right. Because in your memory and in your brain, the food brings back those warm wishes of better times where your mother, your grandmother, et cetera, were with you, helping you. Liquid nostalgia. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to put it, actually. Okay, so some people just don't like chicken soup, mm -hmm. or for them, the chicken soup isn't enough. And there are other nutrients and vitamins that we should be taking to help with cold and influenza, and you're the man to tell us about it. Definitely. I have four golden ones that I use, personally. I'm going to come back to my beloved ginger tea. Yep. <laughs> Those of you who listen know I love ginger tea. Chaga, which is a mushroom. Yep. Elderberry. And super strength of oregano. Those are my supplements in the herbal realm. Right. I take all of them in capsule form. Yes. And with the chaga and the elderberry, please make sure you go for ones that are USDA organic, as clean as you can get, because the last thing you want is stuff that isn't clean when you're feeling down. And uh, On top of that, a really good multivitamin. Right. Multivitamin, multimineral, and even on top of a good multivitamin, multimineral, zinc and vitamin C. Okay. And these are all, this is preventative, correct? They're preventative, but they've also found that these specific supplements will contribute to getting over it faster. They're not going to cure it, but they will help you get through it faster. Okay. We have time for one last question. This is not a scheduled question. Go for it. Do you have a chicken soup recipe? Like, are you the chef? I am the chef in my household okay. when it comes to this, especially you, considering you, my wife is are vegetarian. You, are, you, are you prepared to share your, your recipe? I do a very simple one. Okay. I, I buy the bones yep. from my local butcher. Yep. I take essentially bones from one whole chicken, yep. throw it in a pot. 
I throw in probably half a dozen carrots, yep. half a dozen onions, yep. as much garlic as I have sitting on the counter, yep. and then just start chucking in spices. I do oregano, parsley, turmeric, ginger, throw them all in, set it on a low boil for a good two to three hours. And there you go. And then I just pull the stuff out and just enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And please, everyone, enjoy a good bowl of soup.